question. Hello, this is Will Harold, the energy hunter with Akashic Intelligence, the original AI, coming to you from Southern Oregon in the Rogue River Valley. I'm here with the Walter Russell Secret of Light group. We meet weekly to discuss different topics, mainly that concern Walter Russell, the wave, and all things that have to do with the manifestation of reality in the cinemagraphic projection, as Walter Russell called it. Today, we're going to talk about a book that was written in the 1940s by a fellow by the name of Harold W. Percival. The book is called Thinking and Destiny. And today, we're going to talk a little bit about on what authority do I say they are true? So in this, Percival actually begins to state what he thinks the authority is or where the authority should come from the ideas that he's putting forth. For us to test all things, he th says, we're going to find out how we should test all things. But we're also, as a group, going to have a discussion a bit about maybe other methods to test authority and to see, because in today, we're being told that we are going into an authoritarian environment. What does that mean to each of us? How does that play upon our consciousness? And does it affect our consciousness, or can we actually rise above our external authoritarianism and just develop internal sovereignty. So we're going to talk about some of those concepts, but first I'm going to go over a collage that I have as I put the collages together. And I also like to talk a little bit about the author that we're uh, reading the book from. So today here's a picture. Looks a lot like Walter Russell, uh, the nice goatee and the high forehead. Um, and so this this is uh, Harold Percival, and this is the book that he wrote <laughs> called Thinking and Destiny. And this is a, a cover that actually is colored, which I liked better than just the plain beige color, cover. But as we talk about these, he, he made two actual statements in the foreword of the book, and he said there's very few notes that are left from him personally. So those are the notes I want to cover today, because I always like to get what the author actually said about the book that he wrote because it really shows his intent about what he was thinking. That's why I've shared many times that, you know, for Walter Russell in his home study course, there was two things that Walter Russell wanted to share in his books. One was that there was an eternal knowing, there was an eternal intelligence that governed the universe. And two, that the world was a cinematographic projection that was projected upon a screen and it was an illusion. And those were the two things that he wanted to convey in all his books. And uh, Percival has a couple of writings that we're going to talk about. So as we talk about on what authority do I say they are true, I put this picture. I don't know if anybody remembers this picture. This is from a, a holiday classic that's out right now. This is Miracle on 34th Street. And basically, they're trying to prove that this man is Santa Claus. But in order to do that, they need a trusted authority. They need a, an authority that is confirmed by all. And because they... He receives mail from the post office. The post office is the authority that gives him the right to be called Santa Claus. But, you know, besides our governing institutions, sometimes we may look to our religious institutions as having the authority. This is the Vatican. And, you know, the Pope may have the authority. Our, you know, governments may have the authority, our government structures. Maybe it's the solar system, right? Maybe it's the lunar system. Maybe it's the ancient ways that give us this authority. Maybe it's our military. This is the Battle of Telgelfar, which was kind of the defeat of the British Army. And here we have a picture of authority, right? Are we just puppets on strings to the people that we serve, that rule over us? Or is it our gods, right? Here's a picture of Krishna overseeing his, his pantheon of gods. Is it, is it our religions and our gods and the actual uh, entities that are above us that give us the authorities? Is it our science and our technology? Is that where we look to for our authority? Is that where we should look to, to actually find out what is true and what is not and what is correct? Or it is it the power of the people that the masses are the ones that give us the authority that, you know, the um, <clears throat> whoever has the most votes, you know, wins, whatever the majority agrees upon is the truth. All these are concepts that we 
have begun to develop in our consciousness that will allow us to think in certain ways or to accept certain concepts that become our reality and become, as we would say, our discernment for what is true and what is real. So as we kind of look at these images and we may ponder what do we think are those ideas, concepts, structures that on what authority do I say they are true? And then we'll actually read Harold Percival's own statements as to what he used as authority when he wrote this book. Any questions or comments before we move forward? Yeah, I was just wondering, uh, in terms of the miracle and the the postmaster general, because in terms mm -hmm. of the SDKB, mm -hmm. as I understand, yeah, the postmaster general has got got mm -hmm. the ultimate authority, right? Mm -hmm. And I just find that that really fascinating as it relates to to maritime law and the the Mari, the M, and the sail and the sail ship, because it's all like a pirate ship. Mm -hmm. um, but all of that, right, in terms of how beautifully all this, the, the illusion, because it is an illusion, but how beautifully it all is so entangled in terms of uh, just the meaning and the information, right? Because you can take mm -hmm. the sail, the S and the M and for the mail and mm -hmm. um, and then the post in terms of post and polls mm -hmm. and the one and, and the one being the ultimate authority. Again, it's just fascinating. Yeah, and the first, postma the first postmaster general was Benjamin Franklin. Of course, uh, and, and his magic square mm -hmm. is part of my work, yeah. right? And it's, again, it gets into the Enneagram because this is all part of what this is about in the planet Mercury, which is the messenger to the gods and the nine personality types, because that's related to the moon, right? Mm -hmm. And the moon and Mercury and the Mercury's the mind. And and this, this is where all these thoughts come into play and where the cube comes in is, mm -hmm. is the Mercury is um, five, five rotated cubes. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and that part is where what I'm trying to add to the Rosalian cosmology that doesn't really, it's not whole, right? It, it only includes that one element of it, but it doesn't, all these other forms need to be integrated. What's and then the number the part of it is, is also really important to see where the spin comes from. What's a rotated Jew? Anyway, that was all. Hmm? What's a rotated Jew? A rotated Jew. Cube. A Kazarian? Oh. oh, thank you. Okay, so as we look at these, you know, I, again, I kind of paint this collage picture to put some ideas in our mind as, you know, to begin to, to think, to become conscious of our own thoughts of who we are, right? As um, personies, personalities, what our personality is, as we've talked about in Bailey many times, and our, who's our reflection of our solar self, our true self. So how have these ideas that we've maybe had over time influenced how we discern today? and how we make our decisions and how we live our lives. So this, this is Harold Percival. Again, as, as he, he was born in Bridgetown, Barbados on April 15th. He was an Aries in 1868 on a plantation owned by his parents. Now, I don't know if anybody really knows the history of Barbados, but it's a very, very dark island. It was one of the first islands that grew sugarcane and it was one of the first islands to incorporate slavery as a way of life. There was a lot of cruelty done on the island of Barbados by Christians on the uh, indigenous peoples and on the slaves that they brought in, that it was considered one of the most cruel slavery islands. So this is the island that he was born to, and his parents, Elizabeth Ann Taylor and James Percival, were devout Christians. So and again, in charge of the, the, the hell. Well, again, at, at the time of 1868, a lot of that was over, but the history of it was still there. And that what was con you know, considered settled by the British and was considered a Christian colony at that time. <clears throat> we're we're devout. thought it was okay to do that, though, no? Wasn't that like. Yes, correct. They believed that for the Bible, slavery was okay. Yet much of the what he heard as a very young child did not seem reasonable. So he was raised by devout Christians, but what he heard did not seem reasonable. And there were no satisfactory answers to his many questions. When he was 10 years old, his father died and his mother moved to the United States, settling in Boston and later in New York City. 
He looked after his mother for about 13 years until her death in 1905. Purcell became interested in theosophy and joined the Theosophical Society in 1892. So he joined the Theosophical Society again. Within the many of the people that we study, whether it be Steiner or, Blava or um, um, Alice Bailey or so on, have a very deep history in the theosophy. And upon its breakup in 1892, well, the society split into factions after the death of William K. Judge in 1896. What does theosophy mean? Theosophy was a, basically, it's kind of, <clears throat> it, it's the, the study of all religions in a sense and the incorporation of all ways of, um, you know, of the occult in a sense. I mean, it brought in Eastern, it kind of was the first that really combined Eastern and Western religions and thoughts, you know, uh, on different things. And Blavatsky was really the founder of it. And uh, she was the first to do that. And, you know, as I think Giselle was mentioning earlier, the early days of theosophy were much different than at this time once Blavatsky passed and once it began to, to and with the introduction of Christian Murdy as the, the world uh, Christ and things, there was a lot of strange things that happened, which caused his demise, which then brought on anthroposophy through Steiner, Alice Bailey broke off, and uh, Mr. Percival later organized the Theosophical Society Independent. So he then organized his own Theosophical Society, which is called the Theosophy, which met to study the writings of Mad Madame Velasky in Eastern scriptures. So after, after this breakup, he actually began to um, concentrate on Blavatsky and her work and on Eastern scriptures. So um, and we're going to, some of the other chapters in his book deal a lot with Christianity and interpretation of the Bible. So he did both sides. And he, like I said, he had a background in Christianity from his parents. Any questions before I move on in Percival or? Okay. So one of his few remaining quotes. So here's, this, this is a direct quote from him, from the foreword. The question is, are the statements in thinking and destiny given as revelation from deity? or as a result of ecstatic states and visions? Or have they been received while in trance, under control of other spiritual influence, or have they been received and given as coming from some master of wisdom? Now, the reason he's kind of making these statements is because some of the books from theosophists were given from masters, you know, higher masters with um, these, uh, secret doctrine, you know, there was talk of uh, the Tibetan and some of the higher masters, these higher masters here that Blavatsky met with. Within Alice Bailey's work, we have the Tibetan, which is supposedly, you know, translating some things down to her. So is this the way, you know, and even with um, Walter Russell, Walter Russell would go into these ideas where he would sit and kind of go into trance or trance state and get channeled for the secret of light. I don't know if it's truly channeled, but he would be in a state that was of um, higher consciousness. So what Percival says here is to all of which I answer emphatically no. So he's saying that this book was not written in any of these states of being given down from a higher being, being given down from a master, or in some type of ecstatic trance, you know. So here we, you know, did it come from God or whatever? He's saying it didn't come from it. Didn't come from a deity, right? Didn't come from a god, you know. Didn't come from Jesus. Didn't come from some channeling that was going on, and didn't come from these higher masters. So, again, these are his words. Then why and on what authority do I say they are true? And this is really the question that each of us has to ask as we begin to develop our cosmologies or begin to have discernment <clears throat> on what we read, what we encounter, what we experience, why do we say they are true, right? Why do we say the things that we experience, believe, put forth, why do we believe them to be true, right? On what authority? Who do says I... we believe they're true, though? Well, again, that, that's... Again, that's if you don't believe they're true, then it takes no authority whatsoever. It only once once you accept that they're true, then there you know, is there authority that's required. 
to say that they're true, right? Well, I, I don't know. Well, okay. what he says is the authority is in the reader. Yeah. So this is a different statement than what's been given maybe in some other theosophical books that come from the theosophical vein. He's saying that we, as individuals, right? And again, I'm not saying this is true. I'm not saying that we have the, what, I'm putting this forth to the group for discussion. Do we as individuals, right? As individuals without training, have the ability, you know, as the reader to know what is true, right? Says he should judge as to the truth of the statements herein by the truth that is in him. Can I can I butt in real quick here? Yeah, sure. Just just in, because this is, you know, um, my path and, and where I've come to, to understand, we have to define the terms, um, what truth really is in terms of its essence and um, in terms of its different levels, right? And its mm -hmm. different phases, because truth is something that like Schopenhauer said that there's three phases of truth. First, it's first you're made fun of, then you're you're resisted, and then it's accepted as self-evident, right? Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. something that's been my experience that that is definitely true. So, but again, it's all about context and adding context to what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Correct. But the truth also has three different levels, right? That that there is what we all seek is absolute truth, and mm -hmm. and that absolute truth is. It doesn't exist. It will never have access to that in this manifest realm. All that we'll ever have is our individual subjective truth, right? And through that subjective truth, we perceive the collective truth, which is the collective consciousness or the morphogenetic field. Mm -hmm. We perceive that and we project out our version of what everything else is, but with our spin on it, but just getting that part of it, right? That there's subjective, objective, and, and there's absolute, mm -hmm. right? That, that, that so when we can, and I only offer this so we can let go of like, there's only one truth, there's only one outcome, right? That that even, even within those three levels, every one of those three levels has seven layers, right? Because everything has to have these core structures. And this is where I'm coming from with the, the numeric aspect of things is this is law, right? This is numeric it's law. law that, that, it's not everyone's law, it's, it's your law. Number is not my law, dude. Laws. No, number is not my law. That your belief That's ridiculous. is your law. Yes. It is. Huh? What you believe is, is your law. Well, this is what I'm trying to offer to you. Yeah, that's my subjective truth. It doesn't mm -hmm. have to be yours, mm -hmm. right? That's green, the color green, my, my perspective of the color green doesn't have to be. That's why it's a spectrum. Mm -hmm. That's what no, meaning is. Know. And if we can let go of... of uh, this adherence to my truth, right? Because I'm not coming from that. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from things as what I came with earlier in terms of something I can show you, mm -hmm. right? And that's truth, right? That's what what geometric law is and where we're coming at with in terms of like, what authority are we talking about? Mm -hmm. What is authority related to, right? You have to have these structures, right? These are the laws. This is the geometric and the numeric comes before the geometric. But these are the laws and, and like the inverse square law, that's just how shit works here, mm -hmm. right? That's mm -hmm. something that's observable. It's provable. It's not provable. Um, but yeah, I just want to offer those things because again, context is really important in terms of what we're talking about so that we can really get to the, to, to the symmetry of meaning, right? To get to the, the, the crystal clarity of what we're here to do and, and um, why we're spending time together. Mm -hmm. And I think that those points are really well made in, in terms of when we go back to the collage, right? As we see the collective unconscious, right? This is what Jung talked about, right? Actually, it's oftentimes called the zeitgeist. That for each age may be different. The truth for the age may be different, right? Because the reason I bring these concepts up is because as we get into this book, this becomes, as I said, a foundational concept. As we move forward, as to why he can make these statements or why, you know, what we talk about as we talk about the different levels, you know, one thing that Blavatsky talked about when we did the treatise on white magic was that there was different levels of the initiate, right? That each person would have different consciousness and different understanding and their truth may be different based on their, their level and their understanding. <clears throat> 
So the idea, and again, when we talk about that we're truthers, right? Often we hear this thing that this is a truth community. But when we have the three levels of truth, right? <laughs> Subjective, absolute, and um, relative, right? Uh, what, where is, you know, what truth are we speaking of? Because each person can have their own truth based on their own experience. I mean, I know that oftentimes when I was counseling businesses, I had counseled 30 businesses and I saw the same thing every time. And on the 31st business, I'd say, I know this is going to happen if you do this. And so it is because it's happened every time. And they would do what I told them not to do. And the same result would not happen. <clears throat> right. But because of what I thought was going to happen, it didn't happen. And it, so the truth may change, you know, the circumstances may change and so on. So uh, the point that I'm just trying to make is as he wrote this book, even though he's a theos theosophist, it has a little bit different bent than the Bailey books or even the Blavatsky books. So, so, he, so he says, Aaron, the truth that is in him or her, the information is what I have been conscious of in my body. So he's saying the consciousness in my body, independently of anything I have heard or read, and of any instruction I have received from any source other than what is here and recorded. So what he's saying is, is that, you know, and this is a tough concept, right? But at some point, we chose to be manifest in the physical. When we chose that manifestation, we created a unique antenna and container that holds specific information that is unique, is as unique as our fingerprint or a snowflake. And therefore, the truth that we may experience, the ideas that we connect with, are very unique to this consciousness in my body. Because the consciousness that we have is intertwined with our physical makeup. Regardless of how much we think that we can remove ourselves as the Buddhist and the and some of the other, you know, esoteric religions believe that we're going to become disassociated with the body. I mean, that is, that can be a goal, but it's a very difficult goal to achieve because we are always to our brain, which is part of our thinking, which is part of our makeup, is part of our rationalization. It's not the knowing that we talk about, but to have that not influence us, to have our senses not influence us, is a very, you know, difficult path to take. I'm not saying it can't. Okay, go ahead, Doug. And also that there's no way that someone could say there nothing else is affecting mm -hmm. my thoughts, truth, etc. You know, my consciousness, yeah. And so, you know, <clears throat> this gets back, you know, where does a consciousness reside? You know, the consciousness, you know, could reside outside the body, right? But to bring that consciousness into the body to where we can begin to manifest, as we've talked about in Bailey and so on. These are the concepts that I really want us to think about as we move forward, as we review this book and begin to study some of his concepts. To actually think about where does this consciousness, where does this authority? Uh, I'd like to speak to that. Yeah, sure. Go just, ahead. Just to, just to put the seed in that the 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 crystal, because it gets into Pollock's work in terms of the easy exclusion zone, that it's liquid crystal water. But the heart, the, the crystal is the heart, is the water, is intermediary to consciousness, mm -hmm. right? Is that, that, and again, this, this is the, not the water we drink. I'm talking about the sacred form of, of water, the elemental form of water, that, mm -hmm. um, to really get that part of what the heart is, because there is no heart, right? There's no planet. There's no, none of that. And everything he's talking about in terms of the inside is the inside is the outside. Mm -hmm. Right. And so, and that, that gets into, again, why they say thoughts are non-local is that source is the heart. The heart is where thoughts are sourced from, but they don't get out, but through the mind, right? Mm -hmm. And then again, the, the words and the music and 
why the chestahedron has seven faces and how that relates to seven tones and seven colors was really important because all of this, even in terms of when you're talking about the senses, these are geometric, right? This is how um, these, these elemental forms are, are um, the pristine form through which we perceive um, this distorted version of that. Mm -hmm. is this is, and again, it's, it's not one-to-one, -one, right? This is a, a really important thing to understand what the fractal represents. And, and the heartbeat is fractal, right? Is its essence is, is the, the, the creative aspect of it, but at, at how it manifests is not that, right? Mm -hmm. It's a version of that. It's kind of like a skeleton, but it's all the skeletons have different forms that expresses different beings, but you see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and like I said, you know, he, and I have a picture here from Escher, you know, of the cute, you know, the, the globe with the distorted image, right, that you were just talking about, right? Um, again, and it's in a, you know, sphere, not just on a flat glass, right? Because it's the distortion of the sphere. So, you know, he also talks, so then he starts speaking of the book itself. He says, this I offer as royal good news to the doer in every human body. Why do I call this information good news? So, we, so now we're introducing this concept of the doer in every human body, right? We have a human body. We have what um, Bailey would call the personality, right? Or the, the straw man, we could call it. But what is the vital force that is the doer in the human body? Is the personality the doer or is it the reflection of the doer? Who is the doer that we're talking about here? And why is it called the royal good news, right? It is news because it is not known and historic literature does not tell what the doer is. Nor how the doer comes into life, nor what port, what part of an immortal doer enters into a physical body and makes that body human. So what he's saying here, it's news, because this, these are new concepts, because they have not been discussed in the past of really what part of the doer comes into life or what part of the immortal doer enters into a physical body? But he's adding that it has not happened in the past, but he doesn't no, know that. No, 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 not that it hasn't happened, that it hasn't really been explained in the past properly, from his study through theosophy and everything else, that he's saying that this has not really been taught in such a way. And maybe, you know, it has been, because he had to learn it somewhere maybe, but it hasn't been promoted as mainstream. So he's saying that this is news because it's a new concept. You know, it hasn't, it's news to each person. This news is good because it is to awaken the doer from its dream in the body. So what is being said here, you know, we talked a lot about this, even in, you know, <clears throat> Russell, who said that he didn't believe in the unconscious. He only believed in consciousness and being unaware, you know. He said that we are always conscious, we are just unaware. Now, I have a little bit of issue with that. I do think there is some ideas of the unconscious, like the collective unconscious is talked about by Jung. But I also believe that many people are just in slumber, right? They are asleep in their body. They are, you know, we talked about them as being golems, right? As being these things that were just kind of like Frankensteins, that were walking around in a body, being driven, as Walter Russell said, by their instincts, right? By their um, just animal nature and not really being conscious of their divine self and their soul self. And because so- they may not be the same kind of, they may not be the same as we are. Well, again, they all have- their characters I'm yeah. referring to. Yeah, but they also, but they have the ability to, they just need some stimulus maybe to make them aware. Well, no, I think I think you need to always them. add in the astrology to this to get mm -hmm. like because again the human design aspect of the because we're in a matrix right it has mm -hmm. a code to it mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that that's all part of it, right? That that's part of the lenses and filters through which we perceive, right? We, we perceive the objective truth through our subjective truth through mm -hmm. those filters, right? Mm -hmm. that, and there's seven attributes and seven detriments with each zodiac sign that it is not your doer part, that that's not part of the doer, that's part of the personality. Mm -hmm. And again, that's related to Mercury, the planet, because Mercury is the first planet from the sun, it's messenger to the gods, um, and that's the mind, right? To get that part of it and, and the dichotomy and and again, the fractal nature of the, the moon, the sun, and the earth are the heart, the gut, and the brain, mm -hmm. the three levels of intelligence. It's just a different representation of it um, yeah, at a different level. And again, that threeness is a really important thing to comprehend in terms of the trinity and, mm -hmm. yeah. and what the feminine essence yeah. really is, right? Because we're not, we're not in that. We're in the binary. We're in the bicameral right now. And we're moving out of that. That's what this whole transition is about into that feminine divine intelligence it holds the center point that's what the heart's all about right is getting back into the heart and back into the inside because that's where all the truth is because mm -hmm. the outside is the inside that's where the purity is the the distortion is the outside mm -hmm. and that's the, again just it's just the nature of everything day and night is masculine and feminine it's shiva shakti vishnu it's all the same thing it's all we all have these different stories about what we're talking about but the three, six, and nine of it, the solfeggios, if when we can get to that part of it, because that's when we get to the DNA to fix the DNA. And this is what we need to be focused on, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. That is where the water is intermediary to consciousness. It's the DNA. And those are tetrahedral forms. That's what the letters are. The fire letters are tetrahedron, right? Is that is, and this is ancient stuff, but it's also in the number theory. They're called simplexes. Right, E8 quasi crystals. Quasi crystals are the easy, the exclusion zone. Same thing. It's all talking about the crystal. The crystal in form is what the heart is. That's what these forms are doing, and where all the electricity comes from is piezoelectric. But again, it's 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 not. We try and perceive it with this paradigm of bullshit, and that's not where I'm coming from, right? Mm -hmm. Because it's hard to look at where I'm coming from with all the half truths mm -hmm. and this is what nobody has a choice but to look at it with those because they don't have anything else and the astrology and all the mm -hmm. beliefs and all the bullshit that we bought in the mm -hmm. cult mm -hmm. right and so that's why it's really hard for people to comprehend the simplicity of where i'm coming from mm -hmm. and the beauty of it is because it's it's really so pure to get to that um and again the cover of this book shows it and that 2c couple if you can really just meditate on that and, and really try and see what that's doing and then try and bring it into three dimensions into spherical geometry because that's mm -hmm. not it's not just rotating in a plane mm -hmm. right it's a very dynamic um interchange which is russellian but to really get that part of it i think is critical um because again this is how the dna works and how mm -hmm. how true the, the divine intelligence that doesn't have the distortion in the dna doesn't have the errors um because that's a big part of what this masculine essence represents in, in irrational numbers right it's distortion it's why our computers get hot it's because of irrational numbers and rounding errors um mm -hmm. that need to be resolved right but without the rational numbers and why prime numbers are so powerful is they don't have any of that that the bullshit, mm -hmm. right? It's just, it's what it is. It's what is, is. And I'm trying to convey these principles because I think it's important because this is the center of the Russellian science. It is mm -hmm. the center of everything he's talking about. It mm -hmm. is the thought, right? To get mm -hmm. how the numbers come into frequency because what did Nikola Tesla say? Energy, frequency, and vibration. You're not allowing the possibility that you're not allowing the possibility that maybe in the largest stretch of the game, what you're saying is bullshit. Also, no, I always reserve the right to change wrong, my mind. Uh, you're, you're too forced on this is how it works instead of this is how I believe is how it works. That's 100% where I'm coming from, right? Because I always say, look at my, my logo in, in Telegram. What does it say? I'm not saying I, I'm, I know anything ever. I always reserve the right to change my mind. But you know what? I, I can show you what I'm talking about. This yeah, is not something that. that I believe. I don't have to believe. It speaks for itself. 
-hmm. You just can't see it. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. But there's the other side that you can't see as well, possibly. <laughs> and Come to see me in 20 years after you've done the 20 years of work that I've done, mm -hmm. and then we can talk. But mm -hmm. no, but that's part of the contextuality. And you could look that term up. It's called quantum contextuality because the observer effect itself is a measurement, but what you're observing is what you're observing with, right? Mm -hmm. And if you're observing with all the bullshit, mm -hmm. that's what you're observing. Yeah. And that's why and we're going to- and that's why we're trying to talk a little bit about how do we get out of the body? How do we get out of the bullshit here, right? Yeah. The news is good because it is to awaken the doer from its dream in the body, right? This dream in the body is the trauma, is the bullshit, is what we are talking about that clogs our filter to tell if what is as distinct from the body in which it is to tell the awakening doer that it can have freedom from thraldom, which is enslavement to the body, if it, so if it so desires. And that is a big question, right? That's the big question is, do you actually desire to have freedom from the slavery of the body? Today, many people don't want to be free from the slavery of their body, right? This is called like the cult of pleasure. We want to fulfill every desire, right? We want to eat to gluttony. We want to have sex to pornography. We want to have all these things that don't satiate, but are in excess of our needs right this is how why we have consumerism this is why we have polluted the planet this is why we've taken and used up all of our resources and now have to look to going off world so we can do the same thing to the next planet <laughs> that we take right because we do not know how to free ourselves from the slavery of the body. So if, if it so desires to tell the doer that no one can free itself, but itself, and the good news is to tell the doer how to find and to free itself. So as we had our discussion previously with, with uh, Doug and Cosmic, and we're talking about you know, how do we free ourselves, right? How do we free the body from our desires, our traumas, these things that cloud our ability to see and to actually experience the true world around us, right? How do we free ourselves from this? How do we free ourselves from this imposed thraldom, right? Slavery, I love that word, I had to look it up, of the body. <laughs> the news is royal because it tells the awakened doer how it dethroned and enslaved and lost itself in the kingdom of the body. So now we're talking a little bit about sovereignty here, right? We're talking about how does the doer dethroned and enslaved and lost itself to the kingdom of the body? How to prove its right and to recover its inheritance, its divine inheritance. How do we do that? How do we get out of this body prison that we put ourselves in because we've been enslaved by our senses. This is what Walter Russell talks about. We've been enslaved by our desires. We've been enslaved by our needs. We've been enslaved by our fears. How do we get out of that, right? How do we get out of that to where we be, can become and see the things that Cosmic's talking about? How can we begin to see the natures of reality? How can we begin to see the divine essence of the world that we're in. Because all this relates back to where do we go from here? If we cannot control our essence in this 3D world, it will be very difficult to control it in the non-physical. So the idea is that we need to begin to Stop being enslaved to these desires, 
these emotions, and begin to self-control. And we're going to talk a little bit about this in some coming chapters in this book, where he talks a little bit about gods and religions and things, and you know what are needed if we don't have controls, if we can't control ourselves now, and what we may need in order to have some hope of navigating the next portal of life. So how to prove its right and to recover its inheritance, how to rule and to establish order in its kingdom, and how to come into full possession of the royal knowledge of all free doers. Because isn't that really what a lot of us are looking for today, right? Sovereignty. How do we become a free doer? There are some who don't want to become free doers, right? They want to follow rules. Most. A lot, I would say a lot. But well, as it has to be there, right? mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I mean it's 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 I don't think that we're all gonna become freedom loving people, right? I mean it's just no, you you have to have that 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 whole mirror aspect mm -hmm. of everything is is you cannot and that, that really is a big part of why we're even here in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. is for the experience. Um there's just no escaping it and like I say, that oneness is one, that oneness is split into this. Mm -hmm. And and this is just the two that we choose, but it's really one thing that it gets split into two mirrors mm -hmm. that aren't the same thing that we choose. But it's, a, again, that subjective truth that I hold is what I see with, mm -hmm. right? And so this mm -hmm. is, it defines what I'm going to perceive. And you have to have the black and the white to see the gray area. Mm. It's just, it's impossible to think otherwise, right? That's mm. part of, it's why it's a duality. And, and again, without this process of coming here with the astrology and understanding that those planets are inside of us and they're beings mm. themselves that are still evolving and they still mm. have the seven attributes and seven detriments because mm. everything is now in one and, and that inside outness of what the hyperbolic function is all about mm -hmm. and what hyperspace the inside outness is, mm -hmm. is to get that um, all of this is processed because we will become that at some point too. That's what the, the, the fundamental nature of a musical universe is, is there are higher levels of existence. They're, they're musical octaves, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's just a different nature of the octave, right? Like mm -hmm. cell mitosis and embryonics is music. It's an mm -hmm. octave process. It's a doubling process. There's no separating that from, from nature and the divine intelligence of this matrix. And again, Doug, where I'm coming from is this is not the truth absolute of what this entire construct is, because this is just one flavor of it. I'm mm -hmm. just talking about the things that I've been able to to sort through that I can show you and nobody else has ever seen and you haven't seen it, right? That, that, that it speaks for itself. I don't even need to prove it, mm -hmm. right? That's the beauty of what, what true law is and where I'm coming from with why the spirit moves upon the face of the water and what the spirit of the law is relative to the letter of the law. Because mm -hmm. the letter of the law is the bullshit. Mm -hmm. That's what you believe. Most of what everybody believes is the letter of the law, right? You go to court, you put your hand on the Bible, you swear to the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. That's not what you get in higher education. And so we need to understand all these constructs and how all of this relates to the chessboard. Believe it or not, this is all royalty, noble gases, noble mm -hmm. metals, um, the, the, the kingdoms, the elemental kingdom, the animal mm -hmm. kingdom, the human kingdom. It's all talking about this game that we're in, right? And I wanna play the game personally, but I can't play the game with other people that don't know they're playing the game, mm -hmm. right? And understand that that um, we have access to this game because all these secrets are right in front of us. But when we're looking at it with all the bullshit, we're never going to see them, right? Because that's most the of the scale, bullshit though. is that's, that's impossible. But that's part Doug? of what that's part of what you need to that what I think we are learning is how mm -hmm. to say it mm -hmm. so others understand it. Because if you can't do that. Okay, here's the problem. Here's the problem with that is that that you want me to say something and you to get it without you I don't doing want the work. To do anything though? I didn't say that. Mm -hmm. No, but but that's anything. the problem is everybody wants the guru. They don't want to do the work, right? And this is what I'm saying is go do the work and then let's talk. Mm -hmm. 
Well, that's that's everybody it. doesn't want that. Well, I mean, that's why the nine veils, why the nine veils of, of, uh, of the, the matrix is so important for everybody to understand that we're not all at the same place in this matrix, mm -hmm. and, but we all need to learn how to come together and, and help each other. Mm -hmm. but, but we need to understand that there's levels of this, right? And that, that we're not all going to see the same things and we don't all have to see the same things. And the, the most important thing for me is understanding imaginary numbers and we're made in God's image and how our imagination is the, the limit to what we can do here. There is no limit other than what we can imagine and what we can agree upon. And all this stuff of my way, your way, right or left, right, all that bullshit has got to end. And we need to start coming from this space of unity and the heart and coming to these simplicities. Because again, I'm not saying that this is the truth. I'm saying I can show you some stuff that would blow your mind in terms mm -hmm. of how the perfect order of things, but then we have to agree upon what it means. Mm -hmm. But but in terms of the law part of it, no, I don't have to prove it. It proves itself. Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of the lion and the heart is the lion doesn't need to be defended, mm -hmm. right? That's the nature of the truth in terms of absolute truth. It doesn't need to be defended. Mm -hmm. In terms of divine intelligence, it is so pure and simple, right? You can't argue with it. You could find a way to, but you can if you know. Mm -hmm. The adept can't argue with it. The, not, the, the neophyte can argue till they're blue in the face because mm -hmm. they like to. That's what they, that's all they know. And so that's what we're trying to do here, right? What we're trying to do is set a common ground first for authority. What is the, because if we don't have the ideas of what we set as authority, mm -hmm. we can't have a conversation. I mean, this is oftentimes, yes, yourself? Yeah, so if you come back to, well, you said, what is authority and even mm -hmm. uh, all the pictures you put on the collage, mm -hmm. I didn't see anything there that speaks to me because authority for me uh, comes from how I've developed over time and how I make decision inside. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have all this thing going around, all those things we've learned. Mm -hmm. But it's how we live our life, mm -hmm. how we relate to people, how we open our hearts, how we have compassion to each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can, we'll all come from different angles, but mm -hmm. at the end, um, we will see, I mean, when we look at our ancestors, our parents, people we know, you see, <laughs> I'll say, you'll see how they're remembered you'll remember, um, I don't know, the goodness or, or how it all panned out or, but uh, each one of us is unique. And for me, um, we have to get to that place where we make our own decision. Mm -hmm. And I, I've, I've been thinking about this since, you know, since 21, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to know about the universal laws. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's lots of stuff on that. And But at the end of the day, uh, I have to be able to be out there and reach other people. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, like how to find it to free it itself. I can't wait to see with this guy how, you know, how he found his way or mm -hmm. how he by reading this, who it's going to help, if you like, mm -hmm. because who is the authority? We are. Exactly. That's what he says. There, right? There's no authority out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in that sense. And uh, the first authority that, you know, that I've learned is when I let I get myself out of the way, the personality, the words will come out of my mouth or action that will have, uh, you know, my next step, if you like, or my, or whatever. And um, if you reflect at the end of the day, how the day went, yeah, you learn. And, and it's by uh, harmony to conflict. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not easy, but it's, yeah, it's by being out there with, yeah, like in our group or mm -hmm. <laughs> in person or, living our lives, mm -hmm. you know, um, not, not wanting to be in the atmosphere, like, you know, like being 
distracted all the time. And we learned that before, but it's true life. I mean, we didn't come here just to be, uh, you know, put into a machine or whatever. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting because, you know, he called it the royal. So that mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I mean, I'm intrigued. And um, the duo reminds me a lot about what we learned from Steiner when I mm -hmm. did, you know, when I looked at what they were teaching uh, in the Waldorf school. Mm -hmm. It's almost like the will. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. So there's all these different terms, but at the end of the day is how do we apply it in our lives, you know? And mm -hmm. it's going to be great. Like I, I anyway, I'm, I'm excited about knowing what, uh, well, he says as a beacon of light. So that's mm -hmm. kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And that's just, you know, so, so as we talk about this doer and we talk about the kingdoms and come into full possession of the royal knowledge of all three doers, right? And so the idea is, is that, <clears throat> you know, it's just not, you know, the, many people have said it's about being a human being, right? Just being, right? This guy is saying it's about doing, not just being, right? We need some action. This is really kind of the idea of the Holy Spirit at work, right? The doer. I mean, the the actual action that's taking place, the, the fruits of our labors, right? That um that we actually will be known by our fruits right of, of as you said how you remembered what you did so a lot of this has to do <clears throat> with first right as bailey has said and everybody that we've talked about that we are two entities right we are the personality and we are the solar self or solar angels and as cosmics talked about in the past you know i have this picture here this is an mc escher drawing of him looking into a reflective sphere and doing a self-portrait but as talked about earlier this is distorted right what we're seeing is distorted and completely opposite of the reality that's sitting on the other side mm -hmm. so to actually understand that what we see is distorted and the complete opposite is a big revelation for most people but once we can understand that, we can then begin to make progress and headway on what reality is and what truth is on the other side. And what this book, as he says here, will serve as a beacon of light to help all human beings to help themselves is really what he sees. And again, this is a long book, so we're going to be in this for a while, probably a couple of years. <laughs> Um, we'll be talking about, we'll be bringing in other topics as we discuss these and other things that are more current and applicable. But as we begin to do this, as we begin to look at this duality, right, that we've talked about, that we talked about this in the Robert Bartlett discussion on alchemy, that, you know, the number one law of hermetics is all is one, right? The second law is polarity. And as soon as we go into polarity, we go into duality, we go into what we talked about. So, but to understand that, that all is first one and then all, but then, you know, as we see this personality, right? As we understand this personality is the opposite and is distorted. How do all these other aspects, you know, that Giselle said she didn't relate to, but all these are what she talks about, right? All these things have had an influence on us in some way or another. They've affected our ideas of, of who we are, of what is right and wrong, of what we can do and what we can't do, what we're subject to and what we're not subject to. And we are going also to- Also, how, how we're seen when we die, right? I, mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of it too, is, is this concept of- uh, that he who dies with the most toys wins is mm. that that materialistic mm. and understanding also that that cult of culture that people are remembered for what they did through those same lenses too which is mm. all it's not the truth mm. right and so all of that is like great that's what the whole feather in the heart in terms of the egyptians was speaking to is it's more what truths, and this really gets into the geometry and crystallization and symmetry, right? What truths did you earn, right? While you were here is more of what that weighing the feather against the heart is all about, is the, mm -hmm. 
the feather gets into the, again the bird words and the truths and mm -hmm. and the incantation. And so, you know, my desire by doing this book is to actually again, oftentimes it said they tell you the what but not the how. You know, in many books, and some so this book has some of the how, and whether or not. You know, I, you know whether or not it's actually going to resonate with everybody. I do not know, um, but again, we're, we're it's a discussion, not a sermon. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I'm not trying to preach any any thoughts or any ideas or convince anybody. I want a framework in which we can have honest and beneficial discussion. So, as again, you know what. Where he's trying to go with all this is that once we free ourselves from this body, we will actually create a new body, just as the Christ did, in which we are no longer subject to the physical body, but we have a new body that is... And we're going to talk a bit about that also, because, I mean, there are some ideas that Christ still liked to eat some fish and bread after he came back. So I don't know if he was pure light or not, because he still had some hunger, but he did have a new body. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that. So um, any questions or comments before we close out? I, I just want to add the, the Trinity aspect to that again, too, in terms of the new body and mm -hmm just so we can add some flavor in terms of mm. potentialities mm. in terms of what's actually happening in, in the bifurcate of, again, the octave bifurcates that that, that transhuman goes one way, the, the heaven on earth goes one way. But I think that what, what you're speaking to is that third option is mm. the middle path, is mm. that the apotheosis part of it. Mm -hmm. But just for us mm -hmm. to have those in the background, right, when we're mm -hmm. moving through this, that because so many people think that only one thing's going to happen, right? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. they don't, again, they don't have that context to know. And again, in terms of the authority, this is the circle in, in theosophy, right? What it's really all mm -hmm. about is the circle. Mm -hmm. And that's something that's, that's in the sky. You can see it, right? Mm -hmm. It's the sun and the moon. Mm -hmm. And this is really important for everything because I haven't shown my work, but when I do, I'm, I'm going to be able to show you. And again, we need to, to agree upon what it means, but I'm going to be able to show you these fundamental principles of how the number um, has a relationship through where Royal comes from, which is plasma to really get what plasma is in terms of uh, ether, mm -hmm. right? Because the plasma is, it's the, it's before the, the, the elements mm -hmm. to, to get that part of it and to get where what saint germain is really talking about you know mm -hmm. is that purple flame mm -hmm. is the flame inside that tetrahedral space that the letters are based on that our language and all the numbers are fundamentally linked to you know and uh, but yeah i just wanted to add that part of the the threeness mm -hmm. that because that's what we're moving into in terms of that mm -hmm. heaven on earth is that's the divine intelligence is it has to have mm -hmm. the trinity yeah and we're and not that's... in that right and that's what he also will state in his future later chapters that we're going to read is that the definition of the Trinity has been um, uh, subverted or, you know, whatever that it's, well, it's not just all of it. All of it is everything is the same thing. The sun sets every mm -hmm. day. Mm -hmm. It gets dark. That's all that this is. We've been through that darkness. That's mm -hmm. the masculine phase is mm -hmm. and it's all that distortion is it's the quality, the quantity phase yes. of quantity and quality that's the music part of it the feminine is quality which is unification and bringing things together mm -hmm. right and the masculine phase is is division and polarization into these red blue politics mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. but but it's absolutely necessary that we go through that expansion process mm -hmm. because without that expanded energy the feminine can't bring it back to center united mm -hmm. and bring something new in Mm -hmm. And that's a really important thing that we have to honor what's happened, right? And honor the evil. And, mm -hmm. and because again, that's just part of the mirror, mm -hmm. right? And, and all we really need to do is focus our energies because that other part of the mirror has to happen. But we just need to focus our energies because this is the nature of the physics of love is sympathetic resonance. Mm -hmm. We need to resonate with, with that because the, the, the grand scheme 
system of things, right, is just bringing things into balance. It's not getting rid of that other energy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It's just bringing it back into balance because it's just it's a distorted version of what we're we're going to be moving into, which is the the purity of 360 day a year, not 365. Again, mm -hmm. that's part of what the astrology is all about and why the planet processes is because it's not spinning fast enough. Right. And that's and I honestly think the moon's going to go away because I think that that's what slows it down. But I think that we're going to and again, this all speaks to this phi and pi and mm -hmm. what they really are. Right. Because these are constructs. These are what this matrix is based on. Mm -hmm. These are truths. Right. These are as close as I can come to saying that that I've gotten a glimpse of an absolute truth. Is something I can show you, right? And mm -hmm. where where they come from inside of this form mm -hmm. is is really important for us. Again, for more people to have this context, because until we fix the DNA, this is where all of our true technology is, right? Because all this this technology that the artificial intelligence is using came from that. It came from nature, mm -hmm. and nature all stems at the core from our DNA or DNA period, mm -hmm. right? But then you have to zoom in closer and that's water because that's the water is what holds the memory of our, our DNA and our lineage. It's actually, but it's in the geometry because the geometry is the numbers is the information, mm -hmm. right? It's just information. It's all just information. And that's what um, we're going to talk about too, within his ideas of the Trinity information and what we need to correct to move forward. <clears throat> Any any other comments, Paige, yourself? Uh, well, I'm hoping um, that we will be able to shine more light, uh, uh, get more light in ourselves, mm -hmm. basically. Because, um, yeah, there's several distortion. Uh, um, as we progress, veils, you know, veils starts to lift, if you like. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, if we can get more light, <laughs> on, you know, to shine out there. Mm -hmm. we're going to help well every one of us will help whoever we have in our circle mm -hmm. you know just like well, i think that that's what we're doing right now body. here really understanding how powerful this is is and again when you get when you get the part where there is no time and space right that what we're doing right now is 100 percent affecting the entire construct right and this is just divine because that other side of it is happening too and we just need to keep doing what we're doing and focusing on, you know, coming together through heart space and um, trying to make sense. Do you want to say something, Doug? I uh, forgot. Okay. Anybody else want to speak to you before we close out? Chantel, Brian? Yeah, I... Actually, I wanted to say something at some point. I, re I realized that I was on mute. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I forgot, but, but it was echoing what Giselle said in terms of um, our truth being um, something that is evolving with our experience, mm -hmm. you know, with our journey. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I kind of, um, the idea that there are different three types of truth um, resonates with me. Mm -hmm. But I think that to find that absolute truth, I'm not sure we will get, we will mm -hmm. ever get there. Mm -hmm. It's a possibility, but I'm not sure we will ever get there. So for me, what matters and what is beautiful is the journey of seeking truth mm -hmm. and listening to other people's truth. Uh, I'm not, I don't mind the idea of uh, there being several truths, you know, the, the subjective truths. Um, mm -hmm. For me, what matters is the journey and get into that place where we live from the heart um, more than from the mind. So mm -hmm. that, that's how I look at things. Right. I'd love to offer something on, on that journey part of it to, to really get, to put it in geometric terms. And, and again, uh, projective geometry or perspective geometry, right? Is the truth is where the two railroad tracks, when mm -hmm. they meet on the, the horizon, mm -hmm. that's where the truth is. You, you'll never find it. That's where it is. That's where, and you only get to go half the distance each time. That's what was so powerful about the cover of this book and what that geometry represents 
and what the yin yang is, right? You never go more than half the distance. That's really important because that's the, the relationship between the octave and the semitone is the octave doubles and the semitone halves. And, and they, they happen together. And they happen simultaneously to where there's only one and we perceive it as the bullshit. So it's bullshit. So but even, even, even the bullshit matters because I think we, we need- I Yeah, because that's all, all we have. That's what it's, we have, but it's part of the experience. Yeah. Go yeah. for the bullshit and, and yeah. so it matters, it's important. Absolutely. I, yeah, no, I, it's I, just, I think it's just qualifying that um, if we can get to that place of letting go, like, because mm -hmm. that's where I'm really coming from. It took me 20 years to know I don't know anything. And that's where mm -hmm. I'm coming from. Everything I'm offering is from that space of, of from what I don't know, not what I know, right? Because again, I don't, I don't endeavor to know things except for those things I can show you, mm -hmm. right? That's something that I don't need to know because it's something I can show you. It speaks to you. It'll speak mm -hmm. to me. You know, and that's an important part of it, I think. But but no, the the it's like the the you have to believe, but it's the the, the capital lie in belief is the tricky part, right? Is that no. you can't know it all, obviously. You'll never have any more than a glimpse of the absolute. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, we have to believe, but the whole key of it is really when you can really honor infinity and eternity for what it is and what you think you know in, in contrast to infinity and eternity, you don't know anything and you never will. So if you can get to that space, that, that helps you to let go of what you think you know, right? Because this is the problem with most people is the, the reptilian complex, if it doesn't know, it doesn't feel safe. So it, it, the adrenaline, it starts mm. in fight or flight consciousness. Right. And so this is where most people, they have to pretend they know or they gave all their power to authority mm -hmm. because they think authority knows when in reality, that's not the case. And so their cup is already full and you can't put anything in it because they already know, mm -hmm. you know, and that's really a part of what, where I'm coming from is if we can let go or pour some some of that out so that um, more can be put in it so we can look at things a little bit differently. And that's a big part of it really is. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Mm -hmm. But it's what you're looking at them with, you know, that we really need to honor that part of it. Um, yeah, to try and simplify, you know, because that's really what I'm here to bring. And when I get the opportunity to show the simplification, the simplicity of number and, and the geometry and, and how it speaks to these core principles, right? That everything past that space has to honor those principles. And that's the nature of these, these first principles that um, are the divine intelligence of what DNA is and, and how it, it really works, you know, um, that, that has distortion incorporated. It's part of this whole illusion is that's just what the masculine essence is. It's just a polarization because Cosmic. You can't, yeah, Cosmic. you can't have one without the other. Hey, um, my cup is pretty full. And so when I'm listening to you, my cup runs over. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's not fun for me either, guys, because this is not, um, yeah, I don't like being misunderstood. And it really, yeah. when I get the opportunity to show you, you won't mm -hmm. be able to say that's bullshit. Mm -hmm. You can't, nobody can. Mm -hmm. Well, but, we, but again, we need to, to talk about how it relates to 90 degree, why everything is 90 degrees out of phase and how the numbers, and, and again, how do, we, how do we apply it to the DNA? Because, and I've got already ideas in terms of magic state distillation mm -hmm. quantum physics, right? Of, of correcting errors in our DNA. That is the key. The tuning in to the divine intelligence is our DNA is the antenna but it's mm -hmm. distorted. And so until, and I, I'm saying that it's like what J uh, Brashear is doing, Jason, with these codes, like, okay, well, so Fetchio are the codes because they are the music. They're not frequencies though. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, well, where do we put them in? Because I don't, I don't have a, the PC or whatever, however it works. And I don't know. I just know that I'm here to bring that, that, uh, that purity in terms of. Well, Cosmic, if you know the codes, I mean, I actually have like a, like a quantum entanglement device right that i can put frequencies in 
Well, that's just it. There, this isn't frequencies. It's not what I'm where I'm coming from. Is is that's another thing of of where I am coming from in terms of fractal is like solfeggio. They use these tuning forks for healing and for mm -hmm. tuning the biofield because mm -hmm. in manifest form they are functional, real as it relates to divine intelligence. But in first principles, that's not what they are, right? In first principles. It's more related to the quality, the quantity, and and relationships of what what these numbers are and how they generate spin, and 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 what what um, curl is related to in terms of Gauss's law when a, a particle moves in the field that doesn't move straight, mm -hmm. right? It has to curl, and, and that curling process is this two C couple that I'm trying to get you to 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 try and get how how that inside outness comes mm -hmm. comes about. Right, is it is through this form because that's what this is is a bunch of two C couples. When this is doing this, it's going inside out. Mm -hmm. Right. But it's through that that scalar energy, and the scalar energy is super luminal, right? It's faster than light because it's it's um it's like the, the pendulums, the balls, when you put mm -hmm. one of them, the other one goes off. To, to really get that that's the nature of scalar energy is mm -hmm. there's it's independent of, of time and space it just moves automatically because it's that's kind of where the, the lines come in okay. to this geometry to, to get that part of it right and and what happens at the nodes versus what happens in the middles of of these right. things is is getting what's happening with these geometries um as it relates to circles and lines because that's really the masculine and feminine is the feminine is the circle and the, the masculine is the diameter. That's it. That is the, the very core of God was a geometer and God is a circle, right? Because this is the cycle. It's everything. It's time. It's, it's space too. Okay. So for right now, we're going to stop on that note and close yeah. out uh, this. Uh, so next week we will be covering one chapter in um, the book on thinking and destiny. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll put out what chapter it is. I don't know if we're going to cover chapter one. We might just touch on it because a lot of that's the reason for writing the book. Um, and then we're going to get into some of the actual uh, concepts that he's going to put forth. So next week we'll be covering a chapter and I will put that out to the group as what chapter we'll be covering. And again, this is Will Harold, the energy hunter for Akashic Intelligence, the original AI. From the Rogue River with the Walter Russell Secret of Light Group. Thank you all for joining. And we will see you all next week. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we will see you all uh, next week.